Hello and welcome to this quick video on how to add components to the Badger Leaf libraries um, in Altan. So we've got this pressure sensor circuit here and we've got some temperature uh, down here. And right now we just have a placeholder in for a board mount thermistor. Um, as you can kind of see we've got just a regular um, regular 0805 component in here. Um, that is the same footprint and everything that we would need for an actual uh, thermistor, but it's a resistor, not a thermistor. So uh, we want to find like an actual thermistor and denote it. And um, so that when we do our automatic bomb generation later on, uh, we'll be ready to go there. So how do we do this? So I'll just walk through the process pretty quickly of how to spec out a component. Um, so the workflow that I usually follow is I will go to DigiKey, and for whatever my reason, my computer is being pretty slow right now, um, and I'll look up thermistor, and I know I want an NTC thermistor, not a PTC. Um, this part will be obviously specific to your designs. And then we can look through all the different filters. I usually always check active. Um, and then in this case, I really just only care about the, uh, for the purposes of this video, I only care about the package size matching 0805. And as you can see, we've got a pretty good um, number of components to select through. Sometimes you can you know, click on a parameter and then it says that you have zero remaining. Well, that means that you probably don't want to, you know, have that parameter or like you need to come up with something else. Um, in this case, uh, lead, lead wire that is like the lead wire coming off of a through hole component. And because we've selected the um, service mount component, you know, this makes this combination makes no sense. So we'll clear that and then we go back up. Um, yeah, you can, you can filter as much as you want um, down to what you need. Um, the other thing that's like somewhat handy is to filter by price. Um, so you can see really expensive thermistors here and hopefully some really non-expensive thermistors here. Uh, the problem with, with sorting this way is the minimum quantities are usually pretty high. Um, so sometimes you might have to skip a few pages in order to you know, get minimum quantities down. Uh, but you don't necessarily have to filter by price, but you want to always go for the, you know, the cheap options here. So we'll find a component that you know, we, we like. Um, this one's 10 cents, it's an NTC thermistor. Resistance is 10K plus minus 1%. Uh, these are just some coefficient values here. Negative 40 to 125. Surface mount looks pretty good. Oh, when we went back, our filters got reset. So let's make sure we make sure we actually apply the filters. Um, now that we've applied the filters, um, so this is a component that I've checked out before, and I think it looks good. Uh, always check out the, the data sheet for the component, make sure it's really what you want. Um, read the data sheet all the way through, uh, especially for the more complicated ICs. Sometimes they will have like a weird mode that you don't know about or uh, something like that. So what we'll do here is we'll copy the copy and paste the manufacturer part number, and then we'll go back to Altium. Uh, here, we'll go into our libraries. Um, if you are the actual librarian, you have permission to uh, commit directly to these libraries on a non-master branch. Um, so we'll go ahead and go into the miscellaneous library, because uh, we'll treat the thermistor is a miscellaneous component. And then we'll go over here to the manufacturer part search. If this doesn't automatically show up um, in your right hand side, 
um, you can go to panels and then select manufacturer part search. And that's how you are able to you know, find the window that's gone. And then you copy and paste your part number here. And then you right click. And then uh, you right click on your part and say import into whichever library dot schematic library as whatever component you are dealing with. And then um, now you've got your, you know, you've got your options here. Um, so a couple things that you always want to do right off the bat um, is add in a designator uh, value um, because this is a library component. This convention is for like resistors to have R question mark, capacitors to have C question mark, ICs to have U question mark, uh, headers to have P question mark, um, and then there's some more inductors are L, um, FETs are Q, but you know, whatever. Uh, that's just kind of the convention. Uh, but the nice thing is that it automatically populates like everything for you, which is really nice. And then you can go over to parameters, and then I like to hide this extra supplier part number um, just because it's not super necessary. Um, so then there are a couple different like options for you when you actually go to make your uh, symbol. So if you have an IC that has a lot of pins, I really like using the um, the symbol wizard. So you could say like in, out, VCC, ground, whatever, this is a made up thing. Um, and then it will automatically you know do all these things for you, uh, create a component, address the size of everything. And then you can also specify whether they're inputs, outputs, or uh, anything else. I usually specify as passive, uh, depending on you know the design that I'm doing. You can also make this more complicated. You have single in line. You could have uh, quad quad connectors, uh, quad packages, whatever whatever you want. Um, you can pretty much do. Uh, when you're done, you go place place new symbol or place place symbol. Um, we're not going to apply these changes because uh, we don't care. Um, because we just have the, the two pins here. Uh, so then what we'll actually do here is we'll kind of play a little trick. Um, we're going to go File, Open. And then uh, we know that we have a part that looks OK from the miscellaneous uh, devices library. And we want to actually use that same symbol. Because I'm really bad at drawing. And um, you know Altium does a pretty good job of making good schematic symbols. So this will be in your default like login directory or default um, directory for Altium. If you go to AD19 library. We know that the component that we want is in the miscellaneous devices, and we'll extract the sources, and then we will actually remove data in the existing library. And then in a second here, that should open up the uh, library as raw PCB libraries and schematic libraries, which is actually what we want. So that takes a second because these are fairly sizable libraries. Um, yeah. So the um, default miscellaneous libraries that are given to us in Altium, um, the schematic symbols are pretty good, and the devices are usually like through hole devices or you know not exactly what we want, and then they don't match to like a real part in the real world. So we want to make sure that you know the libraries that make it into the Badger Loop. Uh, libraries, you know, over here uh, are you know corresponding one to one to like real components, uh, so that we're able to you know more closely um, you know go quicker when we actually need to make bombs. So we can look through here. They've got a lot of different symbol types that you can look at, um, and we're looking for a particular one. Um, Sometimes you can do this visually just by scrolling. Um, if your computer is really slow, it might be better to know what you're looking for and you know try to find that. Uh, what we're looking for, like a variable resistor kind of symbol. Um, and we'll keep looking. Um, I probably should have looked up what the name of this component was before. 
starting to make this video, but that's how these things go. Uh, you can also search up here, temperature, um, let's see, thermal fuse, don't really want that. Let's see. There's one com one symbol that I'm looking for. Probably should edit this out of this video. Thermistor. I don't really like the symbol. Um, I would rather go with the varistor symbol, um, but whatever. Um, this is like more closely matches what we're looking for. Uh, See, so as you can see here, um, in this case, it actually is okay um, that we're matching our like chip resistor here um, because we have an 0805 package. However, um, we're still going to just continue on the process because this is kind of an example part. And we will select all, so Control A, and then Control C, copy all, and then we'll go over back to our miscellaneous library and we will copy this part in. Um, it's important that you are, have your grid set up correctly uh, when you're doing this part. Uh, grid, uh, set snap grid, oops. Grid, um, set snap grid, so 50 mil grid. Um, the grid is like what, um, what your components will kind of snap to. So as you can see here, like I can only put this pin here or here. I can't really put it in the middle. If you really wanted to put it in the middle, which sometimes is the case for you know, schematic symbols, like these guys don't line up perfectly um, with everything. See, they're off. Um, then you can change your snap grid, but it is important that you, um, you know, have a grid sized correctly. Otherwise, you'll run into problems down the road and your schematics won't really line up. So by default, all of your pins should be aligned to a 50 mil grid. Um, and then you'll be good to go. Um, so that's the symbol component of the library. Um, in this case, because we know we have an 0805 footprint, uh, we'll go over here to add footprint, and then we will search for our resistors, and we will take our 0805 symbol, we will say OK, and we will say OK. So then now you can see that we have associated a part um, a physical part in the real world, which you can see down here, um, as well as its footprint with a schematic symbol. So this schematic symbol is an abstraction of this physical you know, component that we would actually look at. Um, so uh, if you can reuse footprints, great. Um, if you cannot, then that's totally okay. Altima has a couple built-in tools to make that process go easier. Uh, so if we open up the IC, Library, uh, really, you could open up any one of them, but um, I'll just show you an example. I won't actually place a component. Um, so as you can see, we have a decent number of um, components already created uh, in the library right over here. Um, but if you need to make a new one, uh, I think the easiest and like cleanest way to do it is to go Tools and then IC, IC, IPC Compliant Footprint Wizard. Uh, and this will kind of walk you through all the different parts to, to setting up your, your design. Um, so say if I were to go back to DigiKey and say there wasn't a 0805 footprint already for this part. Um, so I would open up the data sheet for the component. While that's loading, I can open up the IPC standard. Uh, my computer's running pretty slow right now. I apologize for that. And then you look at the data sheet and you want to find like the packaging information. Um, so you can see that that's right here. Uh, for this component, it's pretty simple. Uh, we would go to, if you don't know what component, what the component name is, you can kind of scroll through until you find your chip 
component, which is what we want, or you know whatever else you may want for your device. Um, you have to enter them in in millimeters, which can be a pain sometimes. But usually, um, your components will be in millimeters. Um, it's also really helpful to hit this um, generate step preview model. Um, that just gives the model a like better image. Um, and it also, if you have a like leaded component, then it will show the pins, which is nice. Um, to just kind of like sanity check here. And then uh, we can walk through the actual symbol that's given here. Right, so we would make this, um, yeah, so we would want to double check. Okay, so this is the 0603, or sorry, this is the 0201 size. So that's kind of small. That's smaller than the component we actually have. Uh, that is a tricky part. Sometimes multiple um, packages will be on the same data sheet uh, because it's the same component. It just has multiple data or multiple packages. Uh, a lot of times, ICs might have like a TSAP package and a SOIC package, um, which um, is annoying. But also, it kind of makes sense because it's the same you know hardware there. Um, so say we were to find our sizing of our components that we actually care about, um, then we would fill out the rest of the data here. And I won't go into that now, but then you can make a lot of options. A lot of like the more intricate components might have, um, you know, other options like how many pins do you have? Um, are any of them cut? Um, what's the offsets on different ones? So you can get a lot of different um, options there. And then I am, you know, it's helpful to read through this a couple times when you're first going through to make sure. We usually want to use the calculated footprint values. Uh, occasionally, your data sheet will tell you what they think the land pattern should be for your footprint values. Um, if so, I would venture towards, you know, matching that. Um, the IPC compliant footprint wizard is pretty good, but um, yeah, it would suck to get your boards back and find out that your you know, none of your footprints work um, because the manufacturer is weird. Um, so I always defer to the manufacturer if they give you like a, a recommended PCB layout. Um, soap screen width is 0.2 millimeters. That's usually fine. Um, courtyard information. So this is, um, the courtyard is like the clearance place abstracts around this component. So if I have another component, I can go right up to that line but if I go over that line, and when I'm in my layout, I will get a warning saying, hey, these components are overlapping. That will be a problem in the real world. Um, so don't do that. So the courtyard information is really nice um, to make sure that you know, your components don't overlap where they shouldn't. Um, for the name, you know, use suggested values. Um, that will give you like the IPC compliant footprint name. And then for the libraries, uh, you want to make sure that if you are the librarian, you're saving it to the actual Badger Loop libraries. Um, if you're not the librarian, you're just making temporary components, then you know you can make a temporary file, which is fine. Um, and then we do want to produce a 3D step file, and we want to embed that 3D step file into the design rather than having like a third component. We have our schematic symbols, we have our footprints, and those footprints are associated with this 3D step file. You don't really want to produce a, a separate step file. Um, from there, that's complete. If I were to actually you know, be doing this, then I would say finish, and then um, that would generate a new component. I don't want to overwrite this one. Um, so then we can go back to our symbol. We can go back to add footprint. And then you can you know, add whatever footprint you need. So, some inductors, uh, some of the connectors are kind of fun. Um, this one's a big one. Um, you can play around with this a lot more. Um, but then once we are done, we want to make sure that we save. If you add a new part, uh, you want to make sure you save your PCB library before you try to um, add a new footprint because it won't really know where that footprint is um, if you don't have the library saved. It doesn't like automatically update. So then now that we've done that, um, 
we can make sure that we have this part to add it to the library. Everything is looking good. Um, if you were to be doing this, um, if you were to, to be doing this as part of like a regular flow, um, you would be done here and you would go to commit your changes and then submit a pull request um, and then have like myself or Shelby or Ezra review your, your symbols as the librarian before merging that into master. Um, but for demonstration purposes, uh, for demonstration purposes, uh, we'll just kind of finish this off and we'll go back to our uh, We'll go back to our pressure sheet here, and we will go in our components. And then, uh, just as a reminder, we don't want to use the miscellaneous devices or the miscellaneous um, components, miscellaneous connectors, excuse me, uh, libraries, because um, they don't really accurately, accurately represent uh, components in the real world, and that can be a real problem when we go to try to make our components in the real world quickly and, you know, go to get things built, which is ultimately what we want. So now that we're ready to place our component, we can right click and do place. You can also drag and drop if you'd like. And we can place our component here actually place two because you know we'll have two for each of the thermistors and we will um, remove that component uh, these leads are pretty long but that's okay um, uh, what we can do here is just make the connections. Um, and then one other thing to note is that um, if we want to do not populate this component, then we can go to parameters, add DNP, DNP, and then make that visible. And then I like to bring it kind of back around here. Um, so then when we actually go to export this bomb, we will export an extra DNP column with all of the components. And then we can see like, oh, we don't want to populate this component. Like that's good to know. Um, I don't know why that's not moving right now. That computer's being stupid, there we go. Um, so then we can place our component there, and yeah, we want to avoid like overlapping stuff. Uh, we probably don't need to show the part number here. Um, it's fairly long, but you know, that's okay. Um, yeah, I don't think my computer likes recording the screen at the same time. And it's being pretty stupid, but... Uh, Okay, I freaked out a little bit. Um, yeah, so that was, sorry for the bad ending, but um, that is about all, um, the entire process for like adding a library component. Um, again, if you're the actual librarian, you'll want to make sure that you have the uh, libraries checked out um, before you know adding components and messing with them. Um, and then get those into master. You want to get them into master and get them merged like as soon as possible um, because it can be a pain to try to merge libraries manually. And you know you want to be able to, if someone is like requesting parts and you're the librarian, uh, you don't want to hold them up in their designs. Um, so it's, it is good to get those merged into master as soon as possible. And then if you for the user, you would do like git pull and then pull in the new library changes. Uh, anything more complicated than that with like multiple people changing different parts of the libraries um, can get really messy really fast. So that's why we kind of keep it to, you know, one person having libraries checked out at a single time 
um, and then like merging them in as um, as we're able to. Um, yeah, that's about it. Uh, if you have questions, let me know. Uh, let Kevin know, let um, Brianna know, let Shelby know, let Ezra know, and we can go from there. Uh, thanks.